Thank you, Brittany. And, and thank you, Jackie. I, I asked Jackie, uh, we met uh, just tonight, I asked her would she fall off the stage to make me look a little better, and she did the exact opposite of that. She just did such a fabulous job of telling her story. And uh, it, it, it is hard to imagine uh, living the lives of other people's stories because um, all of our chapters are different. I'm gonna tell you about a few of the chapters of my life. Um, Clearly, Brittany told you a little bit. Uh, they involved four wonderful children and and a wife that I don't deserve, um, by no means. Um, I, I uh, I, I'm going to tell you. I, I would call it three chapters of my life. You know, the first twenty some years of my life, and then then there was a a, a dark period for for quite a while, and then there was. Uh, the period that I'm in now, where uh, I, I, it is so much better than I could have ever imagined, and I want to tell you why I think that is. But during the darkest periods of my life, um, when, like Jackie, I had what I thought was a decade that I cried myself to sleep every night, um, I often thought about, it was really one of two things, what, what is my elevator speech? What am I going to tell people as to why I went through this, what, what I got out of this bad period of my life. So I ask you, what is your elevator speech? Um, when you have 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds to comfort someone, to tell them why you are who you are, what God, hopefully what God has done in your life, what are you going to tell them? So getting back to the first chapter of my life, my, the first 20 some odd years of my life were, I would say, very good, I, I, beyond description good. Um, my, uh, my parents married very young, so I had two wonderful, active, loving young parents that uh, I never beat my dad in basketball, um, even though I'm a big fella and he was not as big as me. He was so incredibly athletic. My mother was active in the PTA. She was uh, in the Little League um, concession stand. Impressing, she was always the mom that all the other boys wanted to have because she was so cute and bubbly and wonderful. Um, I got to middle school and sort of had what was the first bump in the road for me. And I, I, I call it now the first time that God hit me with a two by four. He called me. Um, and, and, and I was hard-headed, and I didn't really listen. And, he, and what happened was is that my parents surprisingly separated and then ultimately divorced. And I look back on that even now today, and I, I've said this to many, many people in the past, that I, that was a, somewhat of a positive experience to me. I didn't realize God was calling me. Um, I, I saw it as positive because I matured overnight. I saw... I felt like my, my parents were in, a, in not a great place, and I had a younger brother, and I felt like I matured. So I always thought of it as a little bit of a positive in a really, really horrible situation. So I continued on, and I, I in my words, I, I thrived. High school was wonderful. I was Mr. Everything. I was smart. Don't mean that egotistically. I, but I was good, I was athletic, I played multiple sports, I played football, I, was, uh, I went to a program called Boys State, sponsored by the American Legion, I was governor of Boys State among all of North Carolina, I went to Boys Nation, met the President of the United States, sort of a, this pristine little life. Everybody looked at me and said, your life is going to be great, you're going to be wonderful, I still remember a, a seventh grade teacher telling me I was going to be a U.S. Senator at some point. Don't know why she said that, but she said that. It caught my attention. And college continued. Played college football. Stopped playing college football. Was at Wake Forest University. I became vice president of student government, president of student government. Got into law school. Life was just so good I didn't know what to do. And I, I thought that I, I had it all. I didn't know what I didn't have at the time. 
And then um, I had a second bump in the road, the time that God hit me with what I would call a four by four. I went to law school and I got sick. I got really sick, very, very sick. I had what's called ulcerative colitis. Um, ultimately had to stop going to law school for a year. Had my colon removed. Um, but I was otherwise okay. And I saw blue skies out of that time that God called me. I prayed during that time. I was a little scared. But blue skies, blue skies was my wife Mary. I met her during that time period. And um, we ultimately became close. And we got married. I finished law school. She got a great job. We were back, uh, we were uh, it was living, living the high times once again. But during that time, God, God did have a plan. Jeremiah 29, 11, which Jackie told, mentioned, um, was also the verse that I was going to mention at this point in my speech. God had, had a plan for me to prosper. I just didn't know what that plan was at that time. Mary and I continued our little lives. I, I uh, went out on my own, started my own law practice, making more money at that time in my life than I ever expected at such a young age. Mary had a good job. She was making a lot of money. Bought a big house in a nice subdivision on a golf course, traveling all over the world, playing golf down in the Caribbean in the Dominican Republic, um, playing golf in England, on the West Coast, on the East Coast. Life was, life was good. Law firm's doing good. Then uh, the biggest client of our law firm, I, I had a partner who I'd met in high school, great, great guy. We were both doing well, both making a lot of money. But I had a client that was our firm's biggest client, and he did a lot of different things. I trusted him. I vacationed with him. I watched him uh, renew his vows with his wife in Hawaii. We were close. And he asked me to help him with a business venture. I ran it by my partner, asked me to be on a management committee uh, for a venture capital fund, raising money from third parties. I am um, a relatively well-respected young lawyer in Raleigh, North Carolina, and have this other business. Now, the intent of that business was not for me to make any money until everybody else made money, but that didn't make a difference in the end. And ultimately, that client started to have problems. Federal government decided they didn't like him, and they started chasing him on a number of different things. They started to believe that he was a criminal. I defended him, defended him well in a lot of cases, and kept him alive, at least um, in the sense of out of jail and, and out of problems, because I was a pretty good lawyer. But that created a lot of stress for me. The only thing that I had really sort of going at this time, God had that plan, is that my wife and I, we both were somewhat active in our church, not overly active, but she had started doing a program called Bible Study Fellowship, which she's now done for about 20 years. I've done for about 10 years. And frankly, I just got jealous because she knew so much more about the Bible and what God's Word said to her than I did. So my little competitive streak had me thinking, I got to do this too, and I did it. Fortunately, in another sort of sign of God calling me, my best friend from high school, the guy that I did all the guy things with that you don't talk about to, to other people in, in this type of event at least, <laughs> you, uh, he started doing it too. I said, good Lord, if, it's, if I'm jealous of my wife laying in bed talk, reading the Bible and I'm jealous of my best friend then maybe I need to do this. And I started doing it, and God, and it really touched my heart. But my life on the other, while I, I was getting a connection with God like I'd never had, my life otherwise was starting to fall apart because my client got indicted by the federal government. Don't know if you know much about the federal government indicting you, but if you're, other than if you're Donald Trump, you can't really afford it. So it's pretty much um, hell on earth. And they wanted to come after me then, but they realized I didn't do it. My client fought them. 
you got to give that to him. He fought them. And then, but ultimately when they couldn't get him the way they wanted to, they drug me into an indictment associated with his venture capital firm. And that became, at least at the time, the lowest point in my life. Because the federal government indicted me. Indicted me for something that I didn't do. I know that. God knows that. You don't have to know that. But I will tell you that, that I didn't do what they said I did. It was never my intent for anybody to lose money. Um, and I lost a lot of money, too. Um, seemed like years I didn't make any money. Trying to raise four children, which you heard about at the same time, with a wife that was not working at the time. But in part because of the faith of my wife, because of my involvement with Bible Study Fellowship, and my new, newer chapter, my new chapter being a connection with God, I, I started to have real faith that God didn't want me to roll over to the federal government. In particular, what I would say is put my hand on the Bible and say I did something that I didn't do. If I didn't do it, then I needed to stand up for it. And uh, my wife, who was much tougher than me, was in the same boat. She says, you're not going to get up there and say something. Say that you did something you didn't do. What I could never figure out, and to this day I can't figure out, while I, I don't judge anyone that, that pleads guilty to something that they did or didn't do, I couldn't figure out how I could always tell my children to tell the truth and then get up there and say I did something I didn't do. I couldn't sleep with it. I could live with going to jail. I could live with people looking at me funny. But I couldn't live with lying about it. Not that I'm perfect, but in that scenario, I drew the line in the sand. And I had faith. And that's really that chapter. I had faith that God was watching after me, that he had a plan for me. Um, and that the trials and tribulations that I was going through were for a purpose. As I said, this is the period where I would fall asleep every night crying, say, what, what is my elevator speech? What is it that I'm supposed to say to someone who's going through a hard time? I wouldn't have the experience of Jackie, by the grace of God, on suicide. I wouldn't have the experience of friends who have died from alcoholism or from cancer. I didn't have those experiences. My experiences were different. But what would I say to them at their lowest moments? I was trying to figure out my elevator speech. And during this time period, I had incredible faith. I can't figure out how people who don't go through hard times have great faith. Because my great faith comes because God, I had a period where God stood beside me. And what I can tell you is that God rewarded that faith. It kept getting worse for me. I got indicted. I went to trial. I was found guilty with four children. I asked for relief from that. The court acquitted me. That's 2007. I was indicted in 2005. I went to trial in 2006, 2007. The, the judge at trial acquitted me. He said, basically, you're innocent. The government appealed. Two years later, the Court of Appeals in Richmond, Virginia, reversed the judge's ruling. Now I'm, I'm, uh, my children are growing up. I'm trying to survive. Financially, I'm in a hole like I can't, can't even begin to describe. But God was faithful throughout all of that. He had a friend buy a house for us so we could sell our house and pay legal bills. Somehow we made it every year. Every time my car was about to get repossessed or the house uh, foreclosure notice came in, uh, we somehow got through. All, I would say, because of the faith that I, we had. And in what seemed to be one of the darkest hours was after the Fourth Circuit reversed, and we were 
I'm now back before the same judge that had acquitted me, and he has denied all of my other motions, which I just knew he was going to grant and give me relief because I thought that's what God wanted. Um, I go to sentencing. If you've ever been to a sentencing, usually it's about three people, somebody's mother and somebody's brother and somebody's cousin there with them. We were in a courtroom about two-thirds the size of this room, and every seat was taken, in part because my wife and other members of my church came. We had had hundreds of friends. The courthouse in North Carolina had never seen anything like that, that federal courthouse, according to the marshals. And that was all God's doing. Because I'm a lawyer, I looked at people who were subject to what's called sentencing guidelines and where the court would say, your guideline range is 9 to 12 years. And I couldn't find a single case where anybody who was subject to a guideline range of less than five years that didn't go to jail, or, or more than five years, they, they didn't go to jail. And I, um, so my lawyer says, look, you're going to go to jail at the end of the day. He had an all-day hearing, and the, uh, the judge, by the grace of God, um, sentenced me to house arrest. And he did that, once again, that was God's mercy because God knew I was too stupid not to keep fighting, so he had to make it easy on me. And we stopped fighting at that point in time. Um, Today, I'm still a convicted felon. I have a good job with a public company. My wife and I are blessed with two homes, Um, one at the beach. I love fishing. That is... uh, my most passionate hobby Um, today. I love being out in God's environment and traveling. So my point is that in now that this is the newest chapter I'm in, and I'm in a chapter of what I would call thriving, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm rewarded by what I would say is my faith that I had during that time period that was the darkest. And it is it 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 really is wonderful. And it's wonderful more because of the peace that God gives me. I still have hard times. I still have, uh, you know, I have four children, so you have hard times when you have four children. (laughs) I have a wife, and we're both very opinionated, both very strong-headed. I have uh, our parents. Mine and my wife's are getting a little older, so you have issues with that. So we still deal with tough times. But I have a peace about me because of my relationship with Christ and that's so if I had to give my elevator speech my 10 second elevator speech what I would encourage each person is to develop that relationship with Christ so that you can find that peace so that you can have faith in something other than yourself and in consideration for that faith that you have you will get the same thing that I got which is which is the the gift of peace to survive incredibly hard times now like Jackie my hard times I would say my hard time doesn't touch on hers but I agree with her totally that that it is not us to judge what our hard times are but we can share much like Jackie did tonight and share Uh, the love of God that is truly a gift. Thank you.